Welcome back to the EHS Flip Classroom series. In this video, we're going to cover in more detail how to do a live video conference with your students. The first thing that we need to review is the interface. You do not, absolutely do not, want to use these tools when you're working with a class. These tools on the left are for doing individual communication. For example, chatting with another teacher while you're in class with your students, or making a call to someone on Skype who is outside of the organization. These are for external communication. This is for internal communication with your students. Okay, so we've reviewed the interface a bit. We've talked about the buttons on the side. Now we're actually going to start a meeting and have somebody join, and then I'm going to go over some more features. In order to start a meeting, you want to click here and you hit the camera. Now, before you start the meeting, you can do a few things. Like, you can give it a name. You could put the date on it if you wanted to. You can turn your camera off, which is a good way to start your meeting. So you can start your meeting silently so people have time to join. Okay, now mute. Unmute. So if you're muted, no one can hear anything that's going on, but they can all join. I'm now going to connect the second user. This is the second user. Um, that's my hand. I've got the camera turned away and I have the audio muted. If you only have one other participant, you're going to just see one video screen. If you have a class full of students, let's say 12 students, this is how the interface works. The interface will show you four students who have spoken most recently. So if you had 12 students and four of them were having a conversation, they would all start to show up on the screen in tiles. You can arrange the size by hitting fit to frame. And as you get the four students on, their screens do resize. This isn't really anything to worry about. Microsoft does this automatically. So as students stop talking and other students start, their screens will rotate automatically for you. If you don't want to see the students on your screen, simply go here and click turn off incoming video. This student, their name is onboarding account. If I want to send them a private message, I simply hover over their name and type, please stop eating on the live chat. It is noisy. So I can do that and send them a private message, and then they'll get that on their screen and they can reply back to me. No one else will see it. After you start your meeting, one of the first things that you want to do is open your video chat. So, I want to click this, show conversation, and this window will pop open. Your students also need to do this so that they can see the conversation thread. Question, question one. Do you like teams? And there you go. So you can share images here, you can share videos, you can upload attachments, you can do all of that in here. You can have over 200 students if you want in a chat, but you can only have four students on the screen simultaneously talking. I hope that is clear. A couple of other things I would like to show you. First, under more actions, you can record your session. You obviously would want to do this immediately, but if you hit this, it's going to save it in Microsoft Stream, which is another product that we share video with. Um, it's not something that most teachers have been using. However, it records it and it stores it. And if you want to delete it later, you have to go into Stream and delete it. We are working to try to make that a little bit easier, but this does record your session. If you want to pre-record a lesson, you can do it just as I am now. You don't need any students. You can do your lesson right now and record it, 
And then when you're done, the students, when they join the next day, will see it. Live captions. This is new, but it's pretty good. If you're recording, this isn't a bad thing to do, especially if you know your kids might be listening to music and stuff while they work. So I'm going to turn this on. Thank you for joining the live stream. This is our first time, and I want everyone to pay attention to the rules. As you can see, it's not perfect, but it's pretty good, and I think it could be quite helpful. This icon switches you back to the list of participants. So if you want to just if you want to know who's in the chat and you're taking attendance, this is the perfect way to do it. Also, if someone's missing and you know they're missing, type their name in and it will push them a notification. We reviewed how to conduct a meeting and some of the finer points of accessing private messaging for students and controlling your screen. I want to demonstrate what happens when you close a meeting. So when you hit hang up and you close the, the stream, you have closed the stream and the recording has stopped if you're recording it. But participants can still linger, meaning the students can still hold the stream for themselves. So one point of order would be to have everyone hang up first and after they hang up, I'm just going to turn this on quickly. Click the uh, participant window and just watch them exit. And as they exit, they'll come down under the suggestions box usually because they're in your team, but they're not on the call. So they'll move from currently in meeting to suggestions. So once they all get here, then you can hang up and you know that they're, they're out of the, the live stream.